Hello and welcome again to Oscar Mike Radio. Oscar Mike Radio is about veterans and military stories, supporting our active duty and those who have served and those who support us. Welcome back. And I've this will be Susan's third time on Oscar Mike Radio, but Mr. Wayne Soros' first time. A little background here. Susan Hunter is an author and she wrote 77 letters. Mr. Soros is a man of many talents. He's an ESPN anchor, sports writer, sports caster, and now uh, working in the veterans community. Both of you, welcome to Oscar Mike Radio. Thank you. Thank you for having great, us. Great to be with you. Excellent. Excellent. So um, how this all worked, folks, I got introduced to Mr. Soares through his nephew, who I worked with, who I no longer work with. Nothing bad there. Just life goes on. And then Wayne introduced me to Susan, and now we're all together. If you got that straight, great. We're going to get right to it because what they're doing now together is they're creating this documentary, this film project called Every Time the Wind Blew. And it's it's a different kind of documentary about the Vietnam War, if I understand it right. You're not just going in, you know, with an action theme. You're trying to get something like behind the deeper story and, and how did that come about? Well, well uh, you want, let me take first shot, Susan. You got it. Go uh, Susan and I were introduced by a mutual Vietnam veteran friend of ours. And uh, we were scheduled to have a conference call and, and I, I dropped the ball and uh, five minutes later, uh, I get this, this voice on my message machine and, and I was like wow this 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 young lady has got a tremendous amount of energy and it was the voice and I'm like oh my goodness uh, call her back um, we talked about different projects we talked about her book and and I said I was trying to get you know something off the ground about veterans and uh, we just we just kind of clicked and Susan really you know not to be cliches but she took the ball with this and and really and really 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 ran so what's the objective here? What are you all trying to accomplish with this film? The Vietnam War was a while ago and, and, and mm-hmm. to a large extent out of people's minds. So what are you trying to bring out with this story? We're trying to humanize that war. I mean, humanize war in general, uh, but certainly that war, which was probably the most misunderstood war uh, during and after. Um, and so one of the things we're doing, it. this is really not a documentary about the Vietnam War itself, not lo- uh, the logistics or strategy or the politics or anything. In fact, this is going to be non-politicized and non-divisive. Um, this is going to be about the experiences that stemmed from the Vietnam War. So we're, we're interviewing uh, plenty of veterans, um, many, a number of the MACB SOGs. So their confidentiality agreement has expired. So they're able to share their stories now. Uh, most of them, not all, um, but we have so many veterans. We have the chaplains, the medics. We, but we also have those who are um, like the Montagnards. So the South Vietnamese people who helped our soldiers. They knew the lay of the land. They could translate. They could be, you know, intelligence. And um, but most people don't even know they existed or their role in the war. So we do have some Montagnards that are now adults. We have some South Vietnamese children who are now adults. And uh, we have the, the women who serve. So the, the nurses, the Red Cross, the stewardesses um, who brought these men to and from war. So we are really diving into some of these populations that have never been heard of. And in fact, not even talked about um, just to get their experiences of that war. And it, we really have some jaw dropping stories. Um, and I think it's going to be very healing and educating. Another component that we have, uh, and it was Susan's research that did this, uh, Travis, we have the, the dogs that were in Vietnam. And a little statistic that people don't realize, there were 4,000 dogs that served in Vietnam when the United States withdrew and went home. They took 200 dogs with them, and the rest were given to the Vietnamese and or euthanized. And oh, we've wow. got some very, very, very powerful stories about um, about guys and their dogs and how much they had meant to them. And uh, w- one of the veterans I was talking to that when they, when they lost a dog, they went ahead and, and gave him the same burial ritual as they would a soldier. 
that's how much they they you know they meant. So there's, there's a lot of aspects that you're covering here. How how is this all starting to come together? Because you want to start when you're going to start filming this. The, the the plan is to start filming in September, and okay. oh, what wow. we're going to do to be good stewards to um, those who are supporting it financially. What we've decided to do is to bring everybody to Falmouth. So we'll bring them all to Falmouth and shoot, you know, maybe a week of shooting. Um, we have a nice place where we're going to be. It's right on the water. We're going to be filming. We have um, places that we're going to be uh, hosting them um, to stay overnight. And um, that way we'll get all the shooting done. They'll also have an opportunity to be together with each other. So oh, wow. they can kind of have some camaraderie and they can share experiences and they can kind of be a part of this project together rather than just, okay, we're going to interview you and then you go on your way. They'll feel a part of this team. So it's a real collaborative uh, effort. Um, you know, have you all ever done documentaries like this before? Is it your first time doing this? First time. It's first, first time doing it, but we've, we've watched many. And, okay. and we, one of the great things that we have assembled an extraordinary team um, in our team, we have Bob Galen, who's a six time Emmy award winning uh, producer for ABC and, and ESPN. We also have Jeff Cesario, two-time Emmy award-winning writer, uh, who's based out in uh, based out in Hollywood. Uh, we recently brought on as as an advisor Colonel Dave Sutherland, who is just an extraordinary American and and wonderful, wonderful human being. Um, we, we have uh, uh, just an, an extraordinary assemblage, if you will, you know, of talent. Yeah, and our film crew, our film crew has six Emmys, or no, sorry, five Emmys, um, on, yeah, to, to their name. So we, we, this is the first time for us, but just like a good leader, you, you surround yourself with smart, right. smart people, right? So that's kind of what we've done. There's no ego here. We're out for the best product. Um, and so we brought in this team to help us and it's just been amazing. And it's, it's taking on a life of its own. We, we actually think we're going to have footage for like documentary two and three. Um, oh, wow. it's just that amazing. And, you know, Travis, you and I talked about God winks in our earlier, uh, episode. There's been plenty of God winks with this one as well, which are, you know, God's gift dropping and winking like, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I'm helping you on this. And just recently, um, one of my dear friends re realized or remembered that his mother was actually given back in the 60s, 68 was given the prayer bracelet to POW, Jeremiah Denton. Now, if you recall, Jeremiah Denton was the prisoner of war um, who was set up in propaganda to, you know, to be filmed, propaganda saying, oh yeah, they're treating us well, three, three square meals a day, but he blinked torture, but Morse code. And right, right, he's right. very famous for that. So here's a dear friend of mine. His mother was actually given that prayer bracelet back in the 60s. He came home from that so that her prayers worked. And then in 2006, she returned the bracelet to him. He had become a, you know, a successful senator, um, returned the bracelet to him, him and he, uh, on the last helicopter out when Saigon was under fire. And his story is amazing. His whole escape from uh, Vietnam, coming to America, and then just grinding through college, becoming a naval officer himself, and then being assigned on the very same vessel he came over on as a refugee. That's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. so we have literally each one is as jaw-dropping as the, the last. We also have, uh, if I can share it here with you, uh, one of our combat nurses who was, um, was, was really, really in the midst of a lot of death and, and casualties. And she tells the story of um, a young boy coming in. It was no more than 19 years of age, 18 or 19 years of age. And uh, uh, he had a, a head trauma, a head injury. And uh, Bob Hope was, wasn't, supposed to, wasn't supposed to make it. And Bob Hope came in two or three days after he was in the hospital. And Ann Margaret, who was with his troop, um, had, had really kind of taken a, a liking to the soldier and came over and gave him a big, beautiful uh, eight by 10 picture, autographed picture of herself. And uh, this, the, the nurse, she, she made sure that it was right by his head. Uh, long story short, a few days later, he regains consciousness and, and kept looking at the picture, just looking at the picture. Um, the, the nurse came to work one night and uh, 
did her rounds and saw an empty bed and they had left the picture of Ann Margaret next to his pillow. And he had, he had, he had passed away. He had a, a brain hemorrhage over the course of the night. But one of the, one of the big things is that people don't realize not only it wasn't the, the you know, the fighting that, that our soldiers saw, but, but I mean, that's a very, very, very powerful, powerful story that these people had to live with. And, and one of the things when I was interviewing her, she said, you know, when I came home, I, I never talked about my service and what I went through because nobody wanted to listen. Yep. And Susan had introduced me to a wonderful, wonderful Vietnam vet. I spent some time with him yesterday in his war room, uh, Barry Funfar, 127 missions as a door gunner in Vietnam. And he said the life expectancy of a door gunner in Vietnam was five minutes. He had done 127 missions. And he said, coming home to hear the insults and abuse, he said, for me, it was worse than being in combat. And, and you know, as Susan said earlier, we, 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 we want to humanize the war and we want to make, if, if we can reach one Vietnam veteran that might be an alcoholic or a drug addict or uh, has a PTSD, if we can help them a little bit, because we, when you're in war, as I've been told, you can never ever have full closure. But if we can help a little bit with the healing process and that man or woman that served our great country in Vietnam is able to talk about that a little bit to get, try to get those demons off their chest and out of their mind, well, then, then, then we've done our, then, then we think we've done our job. But, but our goal is to get just one, if we get more than one, Travis, boy, I'll tell you, we, we, we'll, we'll be toasting champagne. Yeah, my goal is my goal is way more than one. <laughs> I'm shooting high. <laughs> Always the achiever. Always the over. Right. Um, but I, you know, on that, if I could springboard from what he was saying about the mission, um, we just recently um, was speak were speaking with Colonel David Sutherland, and you know, he he's he's all he's actually now leading up our advisory board of the content. So we have an advisory board, all Vietnam veterans. Uh, and they're making sure you know the content is is um, sensitive, We're, because we want to make sure this is respectfully done, sensitively done. Anyway, he had mentioned um, what he loved about this. He says this is unlike any other documentary that's been done of the Vietnam War. And he said, what you are doing is you are allowing secrets to become shareable moments. And he said this is really humanizing, like no other war. He said you all, you know, the two of us, and and I'm. Well, this is what he said. I'm not saying it. This is what he said. And he said, you two are the Ernie Pyle of modern day of, you know, and um, not Good Gomer quote. Pyle, Ernie Pyle. No, uh, <laughs> no that's, a, that's a true quote. And then uh, we have our, our, our new friend, um, Mac Payne. Susan, tell him a little bit about uh, what, what, what Mac said. Well, yeah, so Mac Payne, um, he gets these Google alerts. And so he got a Google alert that was alerted that alerted him to an article that was written about this documentary in the Cape Cod News. And so he read the article, he was so taken aback by it that it that we were we we were thoughtful enough to include some of these populations that I mentioned earlier. And so he immediately did a podcast about it. And and then we didn't even know about it. We didn't know about his podcast or or who he was until he shared it to the Facebook page for every time the wind blew. And um and in it, so I, I, what is this? And I, and I listened to it. And in the, in the first part of the podcast, he compares us to the Ken Burns Vietnam War. And he said, wow, he said, this documentary will give Ken Burns and his associate, Lynn Novick, uh, a run for their money. And, and I texted Wayne, I'm like, do you believe he just compared us to Ken Burns? <laughs> well, you know, I, I started, of course, after the Vietnam War, and then, you know, in the communities I run with, um, a lot of the Vietnam and to the degree Desert Storm veterans, Korean War veterans feel that they kind of get left out. It, it, the World War II veterans still get remembered. The, you know, Ara Ara Iraqi, Operation Iraqi Freedom veterans, you know, get remembered in, you know, the Afghanistan, but by and large, the Vietnam War veterans get left out. And I'm just, um, before we go into uh, my next topic with this is why now, why did you all think that, you know, with all the strife going on in America today, why, why, why tell this story now? Or does it matter? Does it just need to be told? 
Well, I, I, go ahead. It absolutely needs to be told. Um, should have been told many years ago. Um, but I think this, you know, everything is in his time. And perhaps we weren't ready as a country at that point. But I think um, we need to tell it now. I certainly got involved in it because of the book. And I did my you know, due diligence. I had to immerse myself in the Vietnam War to build an accurate narrative around the letters for the book. Um, and so that's how I got into it. And then I just felt for these men. And now coming to know and love them, I feel for them you know, with every heartbeat. Um, and, and I just feel so badly that I was too young to really take part in any, any type of um, movement one way or the other. Um, and so, but I think now, you know, th these men have healed. These men, you know, they, they've healed and they've suffered. Um, and now they're, they're coming to, you know, say the, the last third of their life or what have you. And we need to make amends. This is, they, they've had to, you know, go through a lot and they've had to grit it out. We as a country need to make amends. We need to right some wrongs. And, um, and then of course, a lot of people are, are relating to it because they did stand up and fight against communism. Now, maybe, you know, and, and we're not gonna go into it, certainly not in the documentary, and I really don't even wanna get into it here because it tends to get politicized and, and divisive. Well, well, but, let's, let's, let's not, let's not then. Yeah, so, you know, we just want to give them an opportunity. They went into it because they didn't have a choice. You know, some went into it because they have a calling. And, and that's great. But some of it, some of them were forced to go there. And well, they didn't have a choice, right? But what, one thing that's coming clear with some of the things I've been reading about every time the wind blows or blew, excuse me, is people are choosing to support you all right now. Mm -hmm. What's that been like to propose an idea, especially during COVID-19, especially with all this other uncertainty for people that like you've assembled around you to say, we understand what you're trying to do here. We fully support it. Now let's make this happen. How, how's that affected you all? Well, I, I think from me, from a personal standpoint, um, I was I was in head first. Uh, both both Susan and I are, are nationally syndicated columnists on uh, on Rally Point, and uh, it's extremely informative. And and there, there's a lot of stuff about the Vietnam War in there. And and over the course of the last year, I've been I've been you know been reading it staying on top of it for for me personally i had a cousin that served at a fire base in vietnam my cousin bob and uh he started to open up now a little bit uh you know with with my veterans column and you know he's an ardent ardent reader of it, avid reader of it excuse me and um you know for me it's it's we're very very positive both both susan and i have a tremendous you know passion for our veterans and compassion um my, my cousin told me a story, and I think this is really the, you know, the hook for me, um, is that a friend of his was coming home, and he came into San Francisco, the airport, and as he was getting off the plane, a woman came up to him and, and spit on his, he was, in, he was in full uniform, and spit on his uniform, and he had his purple heart on his uniform, and he went into the bathroom immediately with his, with his duffel bag took his purple heart off and his uniform and he threw it in a trash can. And that gentleman that, you know, I lose a little step here because it's emotional. You know, that gentleman that was over there serving his country, serving our country for people's right to disrespect our flag, to, to, to have the ability to speak out. This man is, is never going to go ahead and, and get that purple heart. So, so, so that, that really, really was the hook for me um, because we are very positive in this. There's no negativity. Our, our mission is to, again, to, to, to pay tribute and to honor those that served in Vietnam. I, th I think it's definitely uh, time and I can appreciate this. Now, are you getting support to, you know, you can support to make the film and promote the film is there has to be a financial aspect here. What I'm trying to get at is, are there ways people who, you know, listen to these shows and podcasts can, can assist, help out, you know, be part of the process. Yeah. We, we have a 501 C three that we're working with Falmouth together. We can, um, okay. 
all donations can go there. You can look at Thelma together. We can dot org. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we, to get us going, we received, <clears throat> excuse me, a tremendous grant from the BlackRock Foundation from uh, our good friend, Robin McGraw. And uh, that really kind of got us going. And both Susan and I, we were just filled with, with uh, you know, energy to get this going. But uh, yeah, we were always looking for donations. And that, that was, that was the, our big reception coming up on, on June 26th. We hope to have uh, some people that would really help us, you know, keep the momentum going with this. Amazing, amazing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm with uh, author Susan Hunter and um, ESPN anchor, sportscaster, both syndicated columnist for Rally Point, uh, Wayne Soros, and they are putting together this documentary, Every Time the Wind Blew, is going to get started later this year. And, you know, around Memorial Day for me and, and, and July 4th coming up, this is always a time of year. The, you know, I reflect on the freedoms I enjoy, those I served with who are no longer here, and uh, those who came before me. And, and the least we can do is to, you know, remember their service, make sure they're never forgotten. So um, I can't wait to see this uh, get going. Uh, you know, I'm here to help any way I can. And it's been a real pleasure talking to you both this morning. Well, Travis, thank you very much. And do you, you want to know um, the significance of every time the wind blew? I, I do. Well, Susan, uh, it's just it has it has an unbelievable relationship equity, as do I with with our veterans. And she actually uh, hooked me up with a gentleman by the name of John Stryker Meyer, who is yes. a Maxi dog. OK, uh, has written a couple of books and uh, in, in interviewing him and reading his book, uh, they were they were they were dropped. I believe it was in, in uh, Cambodia. And he had a, a six or eight man crew, uh, team, excuse me. And uh, they, they were, uh, they, they missed the, the extraction point. It got, it got too dark for the helicopters to, for the king bees to come in and pull them out. So they had to remain overnight, which they call a Ron. And um, you could not see your hand in front of your face. And as he was sitting there with his M16 and his guys were all on point, uh, every time the wind blew, or the, the leaves rustled, he felt something get a little bit closer. And the wind blew again, and he felt something get a little closer. It happened about four or five times. And he, it, I think initially he thought it was a Bengal tiger because that's what they had to, to, uh, to, to, be, to, be, to be aware of. And uh, it, the Viet Cong soldier just clipped the tip, the toe of his boot, and let out a, a, a collective, very silent gasp. And he froze for a couple minutes. And then when the leaves rustled again and the wind blew, the, the Viet Cong soldier withdrew and withdrew and withdrew. Yeah, the, um, that is amazing. I did not know that. Uh, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully get to meet Mr. Uh, Stryker very soon uh, through Richard Fitz Jr. And, and you, know, you, read, you hear about these stories and you can't believe they're all true. Like Hollywood can't produce anything like these stories that are coming out now. That's right. That's right. And it was Susan's idea for the hats too, by the way. We've got. We, have, so we stop with those Susan, this, Susan, that. Anyway. Um, well, that hat wouldn't fit me, so I don't have to worry about it. So you're all set, Susan. <laughs> um, yeah, we have some amazing stories where, you know, by happenstance, 40 years after the war, we're having two people who, you know, this was my assassin you know he was actually ordered to assassinate me they meet up or the person who actually you know detonated the the bomb that blew up you know a unit where my comrade was they actually meet and it's just these amazing stories um that just i think again or god wings there are gifts from god for those for those gentlemen to have their closure and i think it's just beautiful to share um, and also you'll see a lot of redemption. You'll see a lot of forgiving. You'll see the NBA soldier and the American soldier hugging because they both realized they were doing what they were told were ordered to do. Awesome. Well, again, it's every time the wind blew, you can look at the hat right there. Uh, looking forward to seeing this coming together. Uh, Wayne, I am on rally point. Uh, I took your awesome. advice. Uh, awesome. didn't, didn't Welcome aboard. It's been great. It's been great. 
And so Susan's latest book is 77 Letters. It's on Amazon now. You, can, you shouldn't miss it. Uh, I want to thank you both for your time this morning. And uh, I'm looking forward to the future with you. And um, as we say in Oscar Mike Radio, we are mission in flight.